because of the sound they make, the cooey cooey sound they make. Or so that's the story we were told. <laughs> Hey everyone. everyone, we're back and today we want to talk about the second day of our adventure in Quito, uh, which was actually the third day, but the second day of us, us actually going out to uh, explore. This particular day that you're going to see, uh, we were with our tour guide, Lucia. She's wonderful. I'm going to leave her information in the description. Uh, you're going to see her in this video and the next one, actually. Yeah, we uh, booked a trip with uh, Lucia. She came and picked us up around 8 a.m. at our hotel in Quito and took us on the ride towards uh, Otavalo and Cotacachi. It was about two hours to Otavalo from where we were and about two hours, 20 minutes or so to Cotacachi. Uh, so we started out with a, a great scenic ride you know, it was beautiful. Uh, Lucia, she speaks English and she explained everything on the way, you know, where the different volcanoes were. We got a chance to stop and, uh, and take in some views. This, the equator line goes from west to east. Where we are right now, if you could say your GPS would be the closest to latitude zero, 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 but there's no good signal. Look. Very low. Get your signal, but you could try. We we have to the south way got a Paxi volcano, but look, it's so foggy that we can see it. It's right there to the south. Okay. I can distinguish because I have seen a thousand okay. times, but do, do you? Yeah. But it's still cloudy. Yeah. So the equator line as it goes from west. To east, also cross Cayambe volcano. So they say that's the straight point of latitude zero 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 at the Equator Museum. Mm -hmm. If you go to Cayambe through Cayambe, coming back to Quito, they say no, that is. It. <laughs> so the line passed through the promise of, of Manabi too. It's the promise of Manabi, the Galapagos Islands, uh, Pichincha, Quito, yeah. and part of the Amazon. It's interesting. Both industries, let's see how they go. Both industries are the same company, but they are divided by the road. So they harvest the flowers and move to the other side oh. for the next process. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see, Joe? Mm -hmm. The flowers moving. Uh -huh. So it's, that bridge is not for pedestrians only, it's for flowers too. <laughs> Otavalo is known for the huge. Uh, market, a huge artisanal market. It was really crowded uh, yeah. that day because uh, it was a Saturday. It was a Saturday yeah. and on that day, uh, Lucia was telling her it was mostly for the locals. Um, it's usually not that packed because we couldn't even find parking um, on that day. So she had to drop us off and circle around and you know to give us a chance to go in the market. And we, we weren't as interested in really buying things from the market because um, she had already told us about another place that we wanted to visit where we got to see some of the stuff being made. And the market, as big as it is, there are a lot of you know good things there, good deals, but a lot of it is the same from vendor to vendor. A lot of it's factory made stuff and it's really not what we were looking for. They're more commercialized, but <clears throat> there were some authentic things there, yeah. but there, those things were, were not some of the things that I, I wanted or needed. Yeah. Lucia uh, picked us back up and we took a short drive to this place. And he made beautiful ponchos, rugs, blankets, blankets pillows, you, you know, different things, purses, uh, placemats. Coasters, runners. runners. Yeah. He's a master weaver. He passed away last year, but he's well known in Ecuador. And uh, the gentleman that we were uh, working with that day, uh, that gave us a tour that day, 
is his son-in-law, who you know he's, he runs the business currently. Uh, the family's still involved in the business, and he's trying to keep it up for the younger generations. And he gave us a great uh, demonstration that you're going to see here. And they invented this machine. Y esto inventó para hacer más rápido aquí. Aquí hacemos hombres también. Ahí no hemos aprendido. That labor, hand labor, is to be for women only. Mm. Now this one is made for both, male and female. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, for uh, three kilograms can be done in one day. Yeah. This is over a hundred years old. Oh, wow. They only change the bands and that's it. Oh. Plastic and rubber. Rubber. Mm. And that's it. It's the, fast, it's the faster than it gets off. Yeah. <laughs> when they have already half kilogram, it's uh, it's ready to paint. It's listo para pintar. To put on a color. Okay. When the, the water is boiling with the plants and they the get the color, they immerse it and get. Está pintado con la cáscara de nogal. The pin, the the nut, the nut Está color. Fermentado. Uh -huh. This is the fermentation. Fermented, not fermented. Oh. Más fermentación, más oscuro. The longest are, is fermented, darker, darker color. Naked. Mora y capulí. Raspberry and uh, an Ecuadorian cherry called capulí. <laughs> Remolacha. Uh, uh, beets. 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 Uh -huh. Cochinilla. Cochinilla, the ya little one from cactus. Mm -hmm. This is the shanchi. Ya para que salgan firmes colores, ponemos limón, vinagre, azufre y sal en cada madeja. To make the color firm and permanent, they use salt, salt, lemon and vinegar. Okay. okay. Y entonces ahí salen firmes colores, ahí están todos los colores que están así. Colors Estoy get firm and don't lose when you wash it. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. And natural colors. Yeah. yeah. So look, they use this. Uh, this belt, this is leather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they cover this way. The younger guy is not now, but they cover. It's this, a support. This, uh -huh. So then, because while they work, women, they can damage their their back. So they need they need this support for this movement. Oh, okay. And, and, okay. And, and handmade products are expensive. Because as I said, you don't pay for the material, you pay for the labor. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah, always nice. the most expensive is alpaca. This is more. We, I, we don't... I trabajo en mis nietos, es que ya no aprender los chiquitos. His grandkids are learning here. This is their <laughs> school. Uh -huh. so now they are learning here and we'll go little by little to the other side. Right. Now he's going to do it. Hey, the eight daily hours that will be finished in one month. Justin and Ty. Usted ya se sabe de memoria. Todo de memoria, no, no, no libros. No books. No books. Everything is on his mind. Yeah. <laughs> memory. Todo memoria.
I'm not gonna say that we bought anything or anything, but. This is one of the items I purchased and it's very lovely. It's made with alpaca wool, um, cashmere, and the, the thread is made from alpaca wool. And it's very soft, warm, and of course, definitely need it right now during at night in Salinas because it's gotten colder or cooler. Yeah, you know, we've, it's been sunny um, past uh, several days, except for today, whatever reason. Uh, so we can definitely tell that the season is changing and, it, and we're getting into the uh, warmer, sunnier part of the season. So. Mm -hmm. But this is very nice. I love it. It's soft, cozy. So after we left the shop, uh, we took the drive up to Kodakashi, where there is a huge uh, leather industry in uh, Kodakashi. A bunch of stores that sell leather and leather goods. Leather shops, yeah. sandals, shoes, purses, jackets, bags, hats, you name it. Yeah, belts. And the smell of leather. It's just everywhere. It smells wonderful. <laughs> uh, I actually tried to find some shoes. No, uh, no. Everyone, every single store, and Lucia, bless her, she tried every store we went into. Did not asked, carry his size. Yeah, she asked, you know, if you had size 45, and everyone stopped at 43, every single store. So, had no luck. But I kind of knew that anyway, but I figured I'd give it a shot. While we were exploring Kodakachi, we got a little hungry, and I ate a delicious guinea pig. Okay, so after our meal, and uh, we got a chance to finish exploring a little bit of Kodakashi, we got ready to head back, but Lucia had one more uh, little treat in store for us. The name of the dish is bizcocho. It's like, it's like a biscotti, so it's bizcocho. And she said it's made with tons of butter and you can definitely taste it. It's um, similar to, uh, I can't think of those, they, they're uh, breakfast cookies and it's real crispy and uh, crunchy. Buttery. Buttery. Yeah. So it's almost like you like a paste, uh, what, puff pastry where they swell up because they use so much butter. This is compact into a cookie. It's yeah. so So from this point, we rode back to Quito. Another beautiful ride back. It happened to be raining a little bit on our way back. And our next adventure will be, will be the next day. Uh, so that was Saturday. Our next adventure was Sunday with Lucia, even earlier in the morning. Earlier. Yeah, and you'll get to see that pretty soon. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. We'll be back. Bye. Bye. So, yeah, I finally had a chance to eat some. I don't, even, I don't like saying like that. Eat some. So it sounds like everybody's saying. <laughs> <laughs>